the set screws and it's ready to go. You want a spacing of just over an inch, maybe an inch and a sixteenth. The other thing is the angle that we want to cut. The initial one, we want to cut at an angle of 19 and a half degrees. And the reason for that is our stock is 7 eighths inch thick. As I say, that's the preferred thickness that I like. So you just loosen this nut here, bolt, and you uh, adjust it on a gauge that's here to 19 and a half degrees. Now we're set to cut at that angle. Depending on the thickness of the stock, the angle is going to vary, and the project notebook here will show you in it uh, what angles you'd want to cut each piece at. Right now, as I said, it's 19 and a half degrees. Now, we, we, this is a guide pin. Lift that out so the slide plate will go forward to the point where you want to make your first cut. So you go until the blade is the outside blade here, which in this case is the inside blade, but making the outside cut is just beyond the stock of the wood. You find the next opening for the guide pin on the index plate to fit into. You tighten up and you're ready to make your cut. Turn on the machine. A lot of people start counterclockwise with the right blade cutting into the wood and then finish up from the left side. I like to do it in a reverse order. I like to go clockwise, start from the left side, and cut these blades. There's two of them so that you cut halfway into the wood from each side. So the finished cut is made in the middle. And occasionally, you're going to have the wood bind up on the uh, blade and the tool mount. You want to make sure that stays free, or else you're going to get burn, burn marks in your stock. So as I finish the one cut, now as I come through on the other side, the left blade automatically will back out. And again, it's binding a little bit, so just back it out, knock off your uh, excess pieces of uh, wood cutting. Piece falls off harmlessly. You've got a completed cut. Center your blades right away. Loosen the tightening nut and back off. Pick out the guide pin, back it up. Remove your excess stock here. You've got now this is going to be the base of the vase we're going to make. I'm not going to cut any rings. So all I did is take that from an octagonal piece, and now I've got a round piece with a proper angle. Here's your reference line, your double mark. What you want to do now is take it from that double mark and draw a vertical line like that. Because so you're going to be viewing a vase from the outside. You'll know those reference lines are important. Next piece we're going to cut is going to be a vertical ring uh, set on this. To do that, it's important to take this piece of stock, mount it on here, in fact, get a uh, half inch dowel, and trace along the outside of the piece you just cut. Trace a circle. And now when you mount it on the ring master, put the washer and nut back on, you'll know exactly the outside diameter of the cut you need to make. So we're going to change this right now. Move this to a 90 degree cut. Tighten it back up. If you put it in the guide pins holes, it will not be the right diameter to fit evenly on this. But with the, in the circle we just described, we can now see where we need to make that depth of cut. So we just kind of align this up to it, tighten. So we don't even need the guide pin, index pin for that. We know exactly where we're going to make that cut. 
So now that we've got it set in the vertical, we just do the same operation. Cut from the left. And there's our first cut which again just makes our stock now round instead of octagonal. This is our extra waste pieces. Now we want a ring from this so what we're going to do is go and set our blades initially to where we just made the cut and see where a reference point is on that. Now as it turns out on this the base of the slide plate here, the very end of it, is right at the top of the circle. So, I just slide it up to the next circle at the very top. So you still have the same uh, depth of cut. You're going to have the same thickness ring. And before I cut it, this is what the dowels are for. I find them real handy. It's something I like to do and it just helps in that I can take these dowels, set them in here and in fact let me loosen this and show you exactly. You can take this dowel pin in here, let me get a shorter one, set it right along the rod here, slide the base plate back to it, that automatically spaces it. So now we can go ahead and make our next cut which will separate our vertical ring usually you'll find the a lot of the exotic woods tend to be oily and the more oily a wood, the more you're going to have these little chips binding up on you. So don't, uh, don't uh, hesitate to back it off and knock those out on a regular basis. Anyhow, here's our next ring. Actually, our first ring, as the other piece was a base. And nice clean ring. This is going to be, as you can see, fits on there real real evenly. It's going to be our second piece up. Our reference line here, we need a reference line here. If you do that, if catch it on a close-up, there's the double line reference. It'll be at the top of each ring. So you've got your single line references here, there's your double line reference. I like it where the grains are reversed. So like that. So your grain's going this way and then this way. So you have kind of a zigzag interwoven type of effect when you get done. And the way I'm going to choose to align them is just that way. Now in this one you have to kind of uh, visualize how you want it to look and then look for the right reference line. In this case where we have that double line I don't, if I use that double line, I won't have the right effect. So what I want to do is use one of the other three single line ones as a reference. And there I have the crisscross, so I'm going to use this single line right here and draw my reference line. Now I got a nice zigzag effect. And then to know which side was up, I draw an arrow. It's obvious with the angled ones, but on the vertical pieces, uh, if they get misplaced or knocked over or some, you got to know which way it was that what the uh, go back on. So that would be two of them right there. I guess the thing I can't stress enough is the fact that no matter how you do it, you keep side grain to side grain, all the way up. You keep the same alignment. Don't. When I say side grain and end grain you can see the lines of the grain of the wood running this way. 
that is your end grain. When you're looking into the grain of the wood, the way it's running, you're looking into the pores of the wood. That tends to be the darker portion of the wood. Your beaner grain's running this way. This is your side grain. Your side grain will always be lighter in color. If you screw it up and you have them all lined up except one, you get out, out of sequence and you have end grain lined up with a bunch of side grain, it'll look like a stripe on it. So you want to make sure when you get done, you can mark them any way you want, but always keep your side grain in alignment. Okay, now that we've got the vertical piece cut, now we want to change the angle back to our 19 and a half degree. And when you slide this in, that, again, the blade that's cutting at the furthest outside will be on the inside. Uh, and you want that lined up right where it's going to start cutting at the edge of the wood. And there should be a hole there, which there is, for the index pin to fall in the index plate. So now what we're doing, really, is changing this extra the rest of the stock from a zero degree angle to a 19 and a half degree angle. Okay, so this piece is just waste, so you Loosen it up, lift up the index pin, your waist piece. Now it's angled. Now you get rid of your extra wood chips again, and you get this piece up for your next cut. And if you want to get it really close, a lot of times you'll find to make this cut, um, I thought I had adjustments so that I could get it. I'm not quite there. So what you need to do is this right here. You loosen this top nut and take off this bottom plate here. You'll be able to get in farther because that plate will hit there. And it's not necessary to make every single cut. Now you can get that guide index pin in there. And I can make this cut for this size uh, angled ring that I'm going to want. Let that fall off to the side. Center your blades. Pull back your slide plate. Now this ring here is going to be for the very top of the of the vase. So we're going to put that aside for a second. We're on to our third block. Again, keeping the lines to the outside. Mount it on. The washer and the nut on. And this one we're going to cut two rings, both of them which are the same 19 and a half degrees. So we just slide our slide plate forward until it's Again, the left-hand blade is just inside the stock of the wood and find the next hole for the index pin to fall into on the index plate. Tighten it, and we're ready to start our cuts again. Turn the machine on. Is this Ringmaster is one fantastic instrument, and it's extremely safe. I started my 14-year-old boy doing this when he was eight years old. There, if there's any cause for caution, it's at this first stage where you've got a new piece of stock on there that's of the octagonal shape that you're cutting that first section off. Sometimes if there's a check in the wood, or if you're cutting too close to the edge, where you don't have that thick a stock you're removing, it can break on you. And that's why it's nice to have this plexiglass shield. If you want to be extra careful, you could use uh, safety goggles. 
I've never found it necessary, although one thing you want to be careful of is not to have people standing opposite, directly opposite you when you do this, because there is a, a chance when you finish this cut for a piece, if it does break free, to fly 